welcome to episode seven of the Who Am I podcast with the Southside Church of Christ. This is Brian Deal. I'm Jackson Wells. And we are very excited that you have decided to join us this week. Uh, Our episode this week is called, Am I a Laugher? And uh, that got me to thinking, you know, everyone enjoys a good laugh, I think. Yeah, I think that that is one of the greater things in life, is to be able to laugh. Uh But... What I also have noticed over the years is different things make different people laugh. And so my question, Jackson, is what really gets you going? What makes you laugh? So uh, several things. I I tend to try and find funny things in every – or everything. Um, There's always a – I don't want to say a silver lining, but a a comical lining perhaps. (laughs) Watching other people laugh is is one of those things. It's not not going to make me – roll on the floor uh but like that's a great thing people getting scared like jump scares <laughs> okay there there was a video from my childhood where a uh a guy is sitting in his car his mom or grandmother is walking to this uh to the house and uh she walks right in front of the car and he honks the horn <laughs> And she's got like a gallon of milk in her hand, and oh, she no. just launches it um, <laughs> straight out. And it, it was like I, I've watched that so many times. And, and you know, animals getting scared is right. also funny. I saw a video the other day of uh, <laughs> it was an iguana or like a like a okay. some sort of lizard. lizard. It was climbing out of its cage, and it landed on a dog, and the dog like just like. It yelped one time and like ran as fast as it oh my could. Goodness. It was so funny. That's hilarious. <laughs> well, have you have you seen? Speaking of animals getting scared, have you seen the the thing with cats and cucumbers? Yeah, I have seen that. I don't um, know what that's about. I, so I've I done get it. I've done Why research that so on funny? that, and it's it's not necessarily that it's a cucumber. It's that the cucumber showed up. When they weren't looking. When they weren't looking. It, I think <laughs> it could have been anything, but for some reason a cucumber okay. caught on. Um, but if if a, something sneaks up on a cat and they're not expecting it, if something as weird as a cucumber, right. uh, it's going to frighten them. So, you know, we tried that with our cat, uh-huh. and he just turned around and looked at it yeah. and just walked away. And, and, yeah. And so it didn't do anything. And then we tried it again, and he started eating it. Oh, wow. <laughs> we <were> like, okay. <laughs> well, that's not going to work. <laughs> well, the, uh, the other thing that really causes me to laugh are when children get slightly hurt. Not That That sounds really bad. <laughs> that does sound bad. Like, like, what are you saying? Like, like if a kid falls over scorpions or something like that, and they're not like hurt really bad. You know, that's funny. Like, okay. Like, like a kid a kid that's like learning how to ride their bicycle. Oh, okay. And, and okay. They, they get going too yeah. fast and they run into the curb and just get sure, launched. Sure. I find that pretty funny. Going the, over the handlebars. That's, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. The, there's these like inflatable obstacle courses that have uh, uh, these this thing in the middle that spins around with arms oh, yes. sticking out. Yes. And kids will get in that thing thinking they're on – American Ninja Warrior and just get absolutely <laughs> rocked and yes. I can't help but laugh. <laughs> yeah, I've seen I've seen videos like that. Especially when they they stand back up and immediately get knocked back down yeah. by something like that. <laughs> um there's there's like are many things that I could talk about that I find funny and I think a lot of it has to do with my consumption of uh media in regards to Vine. That's kind of okay. where Vine was really the first thing I started watching. It was these like short clips sure. of something random happening, and it either being a fail where a kid got hurt or somebody right, getting jump right. scared. I I think that's where a lot of the things I laugh at come from. <laughs> well, it, and that's that's kind of what I was thinking of a lot too. Was the little short clips of things like that that ha- that you see. Like we've we've watched America's funniest videos yeah. a lot, and a lot of those are those kinds of things. Yeah, pranks people play well, or with, people grow, getting scared by something. Growing up, my family we watched America's funniest videos a lot. Um, right. Tom Bergeron was the host at the time, yeah. and <laughs> and like we we don't watch 
AFV anymore because we have it on our phones at any given moment. It's, it's like, true. No, yeah. no matter what, I'm. I know that if I open Instagram, I'm gonna see something funny. You can find it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. What do, What is it that that you find funny? I think I think similar to you, the physical comedy, like like anything that's kind of slapsticky. Okay. Uh, so so that's true when it's we're talking about like little short videos, but also. Uh-huh. Like a movie or TV show, that's the kind of stuff that gets me going. Yeah, is is just <laughs> stupid stuff like, like that. Jim Carrey, <laughs> like a Jim Carrey <laughs> to a degree. Now there were some movies and things that he did that were just so over the top. Yeah, it was it just wasn't funny to me. But a lot of that type stuff. There's a scene he's beating himself up in the bathroom, <laughs> and just watching that, it there's, just cracks me up. There's a there's a <laughs> talking about slapstick. There's a guy who would dress as a mime. Okay. And he would, this is like Vine again, or Instagram. <laughs> he would dress up as a mime and then do something that would cause actual pain, like get hit in the shin with a scooter, okay. you know? Okay. And he was not allowed to make a noise. Like, that oh, was the whole objective. Goodness <laughs> and gracious. it was so funny watching this guy. Like, you could see all the expression on his face. Right, right. And I think that's one of the things Jim Carrey does really <laughs> good, to sell you on whatever yes. it is, is his expression. The, the expressions on his face, yeah. <laughs> of course, I go back, you know, even further, you know, dumb dumb things like... <laughs> I thought you were about to say dumb and dumber. Uh, oh, well, dumb and dumber <laughs> just kills me because it's it's so stupid. Yeah. But... It lives up to its uh, name. <laughs> You know, uh, Dick Van Dyke was great at the physical comedy stuff. Yeah, and just uh, watching the Dick Van Dyke show just always cracked me up. And I also like sarcastic humor. Okay, yeah, you know, real clever. Oh yeah, uh, you know, real just just little comments mm-hmm. stuck in. You know, that'll get me going. Yeah. So there's there's a uh, I watched a, a video I watched a lot of videos but this one was about the idea of a laugh track in a TV show and right. how a laugh track takes up so much time uh, um, that yeah. if you have a show that doesn't have a laugh track your jokes per minute is higher wow. and so in shows that have the sarcastic humor or that quick witty humor you're right. actually experiencing not only in my opinion funnier stuff but more of it oh so, sure like, yeah sarcastic humor is a, is a it's great <laughs> but one of the things that that you sort of mentioned that really i don't know why gets me going is if i'm watching something with someone if it's the right person or situation and the way they laugh, and if they get going, I'll get going, yep. and it will feed off of each other. <laughs> yeah. and, and and this was true of my roommate uh, my freshman year of college, Paul Sin, and I'm going to try to send this to him so that he listens to this. <laughs> Something about him. I mean, we kind of grew up together. Uh, not kind of. We did grow up together. <laughs> and, and so he was the, the son of the preacher where I grew up. And so we were roommates my freshman year at Harding, and there would be nights we'd have something on, and he would start laughing, and just him laughing as hard as he was would get me going, <laughs> and we'd be crying laughing at the dumbest things. Yeah. And and so just something about that, I just really enjoy yeah. laughing with people. Yeah, right? well, I think that's such a... A good thing. I had I had a roommate in college my freshman year who I was only a roommate with for a semester. But my best memory with that guy was watching a show with him that I had never seen that he thought was hilarious. <laughs> right. And it was just a blooper that he thought was really funny. And we probably sat there and watched, rewatched it for 30 minutes. It yes. was hilarious. <laughs> just laughing. And I think that we could talk about laughing for a really long time. Oh, yeah. About the memories that we have associated with it, it's laughing is fun. Right, right. It's, it's just, we need, I think we need more of it. Um, Absolutely. And, uh, and and I, I encourage people to find ways to laugh. Uh, if you're listening right now, you know, uh, I hope you've been able maybe to laugh with us. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Absolutely. I, but, you know, I did want to bring this up because I wrote it down here. Did Have you ever noticed that there is generational gaps in what, qualifies as humorous absolutely absolutely Uh, my my 
my grandpa is somebody who, if you can get him laughing, it's one of those contagious things. Okay, and so you're right. going to be laughing with right. him. But you've got to be watching something like The Little Rascals or, <laughs> you know, okay. some, something like that where it's, it's, it's a little bit older – Directed right. toward that age group, you know. Right. But de- definitely, I think I think there are a lot of things that I think are funny that my parents think is just completely stupid. Oh, oh, I can promise you that that's true, <laughs> because <laughs> your parents and I are not very far apart in age. Yeah. And <laughs> so, so for those of you that that may be listening that don't know Jackson and I very well, there is a generation gap here. Uh, Jackson was born the year I graduated high school. <laughs> So, yeah, there are times when Jackson will show me something, and he's like, "Hey, the, this is really funny." You know, the kids kids are watching this or whatever, <laughs> and I watch it, and it's over, and I look at it, and I'm like, "Why was that funny? <laughs> that that's one of the weirdest things I've ever seen. That makes no sense." <laughs> and that that's that's the that's the thing. I, I I looked up a quote, and I thought this this was this was perfect, and it seems it's so uh, broody and deep and meaningful <laughs> okay it's completely not true i don't i don't think but this is this is a, a a quote that i said why or i was looking at why does gen z humor exist the way that it does okay and this was the quote such simple nonsensical things in such a dark complex world are just so amusing due to their absurdness <laughs> and the the last part there is true it's funny because it's absurd and that's it that's it okay um, <laughs> So and just because something's weird makes yeah. it funny. Like there, there's some truth behind that. Like <laughs> if you're if you're Gen Z, the year you were born is like from '97 to 2012, give okay. or take a couple okay. of years, you know. And like the world that we've grown up in is dark. Like I would, I would, I mean, like 2001. I'm four years old. That's when 9/11 happens. You know, like right, it's right. dark. But also, it, the world has been dark. Forever, sure. <laughs> so that can't be just true for Gen Z. But if it's the more absurd it is, the more five minutes of fame that you can get out of it, a lot of times the funnier it is. Um, yeah, yeah. So. I, I guess. Yeah, like, like there, there are so many. I still things. the the mango on a fork thing. Mango on a fork. I don't know I, why anybody cares about that video. N- no, and, and nobody does anymore. Like it was, <laughs> it was a flash in the pan. There are some things that have uh, pervaded, like uh, free shavakadu. Um, I don't know what that means. Road work ahead. I sure hope it does. Like, there's just like some things that have have lasted a little bit longer, um, just because they're so <laughs> iconic. But. Like I said, we could talk about this That's forever. True. Right. And we, we, I mean, we, we have talked about it for a long time. And the, the title of this episode is Am I a Laugher? But the meat of the week isn't necessarily about something that's funny. But we're, we're going to read some text here. And you might even ask yourself, or you, you might even find that this is a little bit funny. You might think that you would respond in a similar way. Um, but if you've got your Bible, or if, if you're driving along in your car, don't worry to read it. I'll, I'll read it for you. Um, <laughs> go to Genesis chapter 17, and we're going to look at a story uh, briefly about uh, Abraham and, and uh, his wife, uh, Sarah. And we're going to start in verse uh, 15 of chapter 17. I'm just going to read two verses or three verses here. Starting in verse 15, God said to Abraham, as for your wife, Sarai, do not call her Sarai, for Sarah will be her name. I will bless her. Indeed, I will give you a son by her. I will bless her, and she will produce nations, kings of people. Kings of people will come from her. Abraham fell face down. Then he laughed and said to himself, Can a child be born to a hundred-year-old man? Can Sarah, a ninety-year-old woman, give birth? (laughs) LOL. That's what what (laughs) Abraham Abraham (laughs) hears something from... God promising him a child from his 90 year old wife. And his response is to laugh. <laughs> right. Um, if we go to the next chapter, uh, chapter 18, we read verses 10 through 14. Uh, we get a little insight on Sarah's reaction. <laughs> the Lord said, I will certainly come back to you in about a year's time. And your wife, Sarah will have a son. Now, Sarah was listening at the entrance of the tent behind him. Abraham and Sarah were old and getting on in years. Sarah had past the age of childbearing. So she laughed to herself. After I am worn out and my Lord is old, will I have delight? But the Lord asked Abraham, 
Why did Sarah laugh, saying, Can I really have a baby when I'm old? Is anything impossible for the Lord? At the appointed time, I will come back to you. And in about a year, she will have a son. On both occasions, whenever Abraham heard the news and whenever (laughs) Sarah heard the news about them having a baby at this old age, their response was to laugh. Yeah, yeah. And and I think that what's... (laughs) What's great about this is the description that we have in, in our Bibles of yes. exactly how this happened, because Abraham fell over laughing. <laughs> yeah, he was literally R O F L. Yes, yes. <laughs> I, I mean, I've laughed hard at some things in my life. I, I mean, like I said before, you know, it really gets stirred up when I'm with other people that are laughing. Yes, and. And I, you know, I've laughed so hard. I've been crying, laughing. I've been at a comedy show where I, I, I was crying, laughing so much, and then eventually I, I had to, like, I was so worn out. Yes. That the, yes. the last like fifteen to thirty minutes of that show, I didn't laugh at all at anything <laughs> because I was just so exhausted from laughing so much for the previous oh, hour man. or whatever. But I have never fallen down laughing i can't i can't figure out <laughs> what it would take to get me to to laugh that hard and that's my new i've got i found my new goal your goal is to make me <laughs> fall over laughing maybe so uh but but i i think maybe that is there in our in our bibles to help us understand just how ridiculous Abraham thought this promise was. Yeah. It was it was laughable. There's just no way this is ever going to happen. And he he had a good reason to to suspect that it was not true. Yeah. That this was some joke that God is playing on him or something, <laughs> yeah. you know. Ha ha, okay, real funny. Right, uh, you know. Right. But God's response in verse 14 of chapter 18, I think, is perfect and the perfect lesson for us he says is anything too hard for the lord the answer to that question of course we know is no right. nothing is too impo- nothing is impossible for the lord um i think about we're in genesis right now i'll go back you know 17 chapters to chapter 1 god spoke and the earth was created. Like, <laughs> right? You can't tell me that there isn't anything he can't do. Like, he he is able to do all things. Now, whenever he says something to Abraham that humanly, biologically seems impossible, <laughs> it makes sense that that's their reaction. Right. Um, but based off of what we know now about God and His ability, hindsight's twenty twenty here, and like we know what happens with Abraham and Sarah. They have a son named Isaac, and like. He does become the father of Israel. Like nothing is impossible, but and we we understand that to be true in our lives. But oftentimes we get to a point where we're not sure if we believe that, and we have to ask ourselves: Do we trust this verse where God says, "Is anything impossible for the Lord?" It's, it's a rhetorical question, and sometimes we think, "Yeah, there are some things that are impossible. There, there are some things." <laughs> We have to trust that that is true, because that when we trust that it is true, our lives uh, can be changed. Abraham had good reasoning to believe that God could do the impossible, yet right. he laughed about it because he lacked trust. Yeah. It was also yeah. so absurd that maybe that was the only... <laughs> like, even if he did believe it was funny, he's like, God, that is the best prank ever. Right, yeah. <laughs> um but like I said, we have the entire Bible to, to look through, and we see all of the quote-unquote impossible things that God has done. So logically, we should have more trust than Abraham did, because we've, we've got all of this evidence of the crazy things that right. God has done. Right. So we should trust. <laughs> and I could talk about if we don't do that, oftentimes we put our trust into other things, and that that's. Mm. but I want to talk about... Having trust in a relationship with God is simply important. You have to have trust in a relationship if in, with God if you want that relationship to grow. Right. And I ask yourself, well, why is that a big part of the relationship? I'm a human. 
and I'm going to make mistakes. I know that. God is not, and he knows what is best for me. So whenever I'm found in some sort of trial or challenge or whatever, I can turn to Scripture, I can turn to God, I can find solace, peace, and maybe even an answer if I trust him. Mm. If I don't, that's when I'm going to turn on my own understanding, and ultimately that is that leads to doom. I think about the parent and the child, and the parent is telling the child to, don't put your hand on the stove. Trust me, it's <laughs> right. bad. The reason that y- you're telling your kid to not do that is so they don't get hurt. But sometimes the child, if the child doesn't trust the parent, the, they're going to touch the stove because they want to see what happens. Um, and a lot of times our, our pain can be avoided simply by trusting God. Right. That's not always true because uh, if Abraham had trusted God in this moment, he's still going to have to, you know, be a hundred years old and raising a child, which is which is no easy. <laughs> which is thing. a pain. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but when we trust God, it helps us be spiritually safer, right? Um, and and this is something else that I kind of whenever we talk about trust, we talk about building trust, and the when you building something, it takes time. You're not going to be able to just have 100% trust in something uh, at once unless you're perfect and we're not. Um, and so this concept of building truth or not building truth, building trust is so important. The problem with a building is that it can be torn down and oftentimes trust is torn down a lot faster than it is built. Sure. We have to realize that if our trust is torn down with God, it's not God's doing. It's it's our doing because God is perfect. I saw a, a graphic, and maybe we can share it on Facebook or something, of the word trust in the middle and a bunch of arrows with other words pointing to trust. And it kind of was mm. saying trust is trust exists when you have all of these things. Okay. Commitment, sincerity, reliability, integrity, competence, and consistency. And I thought, God is 100% all of those things. That's right. So there is no reason that we shouldn't trust him. Absolutely. that we couldn't trust him. And so if there is a lack of trust, it is, it's on us. Sure. It's on us. Sure. Well, and I I think, I always think of the old song that we sing, Trust and Obey. Yeah. And it's interesting how closely knit those two concepts are, Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, the the example of the child with the hot stove is exactly the way our trust with God works. Mm-hmm. He he tells us this is the better way to live your life. If you trust Him, then you're going to obey mm-hmm. what what He says. You know he he knows right from wrong. He knows what's best for us, and if we trust Him, obedience just is going to naturally follow. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And that's and that's what we really want to try and and leave all of you with today, is the importance of genuine trust in God in our lives. And as Jackson said, if if we can look back at all the examples that we have available to us of what God is capable of doing in people's lives, if God can can raise a man from the dead the way he did with Lazarus in John chapter 11. If God is capable of restoring sight to a blind person like he does in John chapter 9, if God can give a 90-year-old woman a son like what we've been talking about today, then you know what? I'm, I'm pretty confident that he is able to handle whatever is going on in our lives. Yeah. Uh, no matter what the challenge is that we're facing, no matter what our problems may be, God can do it. He He can get us through it, uh, no matter what. And we need to do a better job of of trusting Him more than we trust ourselves. Yeah. More than we trust e- even others who may have advice for us or books or the internet or whatever. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> whatever else is out there. So I, th- I think when we say, am I a laugher? I think the answer is, oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, we need to be laughing. We need to be, be finding ways to have joy in this life and that sort of thing because there is so much darkness, like, he, like Jackson said. But 
let's not laugh the way Abraham and Sarah did. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree with that. <laughs> let's, let's not laugh at the idea that God is is powerful enough to do what seems impossible. Yeah. Uh, because he he is a powerful God and is able to do uh, whatever else, uh, whatever we need in uh, in this life. Well, um, Jackson, what what do you have? Do you have any I, parting shots? Or I don't thoughts? really have anything else. the 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 concept of this podcast is our our identity in Christ, and and trust is a big part of that. Absolutely. There there are so many times where we we see how the disciples had to just trust Jesus. And a lot of times they questioned it, just like Abraham and right. Sarah did. But <laughs> in the end, we, we see how Christ's story impacts us now. And just like the disciples, we got to trust them. So. Exactly. Exactly. All right. Well, thank you so much to all of you for joining us today. And we pray that this episode has been helpful to you in strengthening your identity in Jesus Christ. We look forward to having you tune in with us next time. Take care.